Hello and welcome to Aspiring Watch Collector. It's been a long time. It's been almost more than a month since I've put out a video. So I was quite busy as I traveled to India and <clears throat> yeah, so I couldn't, uh, you know, get time to post videos. But there are many interesting watches coming up. Uh, uh, like, for example, uh, I have... Uh, this Longines uh, watch that I need to uh, review and so but today I'm going to talk about the swatch group uh, one uh, of the watches I found in India was this uh, swatch uh, watch and it was in a very bad condition so basically this had scratches all over the glass and the strap uh, had lost color and you know if you can see it uh, all this had chipped off somehow I don't know uh, what this watch went through it it belonged to my father-in-law and it is all it was all gone so what I did was I tried to uh, you know bring this uh, revive this watch back to life and I would say I succeeded to some extent yeah, but not completely, like not as good as new, but it's still uh, wearable and in a good condition now. So, yeah, I, I have not, unfortunately, I have not put up a uh, battery on this watch. Uh, yeah, but if you can see the chrono, it's a swatch uh, chronograph. And uh, yeah, it's got this aluminium, uh, you know, uh, looking feel which is quite good uh, mainly for men for uh, the younger generation and uh, yeah so how i what i did with this watch was uh, firstly i painted this whole uh, watch uh, i don't it is not a very good job as you can see here and all the finishing is not good because i am a noob at this but uh, i taped on the i put tape on the dial and I used this, uh, you know, chrome, chrome lac spray. Uh, I wanted to have uh, a, this chrome look, but uh, <laughs> it turns out that uh, this particular uh, color gave it almost similar look as, uh, you know, how the watch was before. So I got the same aluminum feel and uh, yeah but it's okay uh, as uh, as it's a swatch and uh, it's better to have maybe the aluminum feel back and the next thing i did was this uh, uh crystal or it's basically plastic i think has had a lot of scratches and uh, to fix that i used this one uh, sorry uh, it's called poly watch it's a small tube uh, for around three euros uh, and I just put it up and you know rubbed it with uh, uh, you know a lens uh, towel uh, that we use to clean our uh, glasses so when I rub this uh, almost all scratches are gone but what happened was while painting uh, I happened to uh, you know not tape it so well so there is some pain marks here and there which I have to figure out how to get it removed. But uh, overall, I feel it's a pretty and uh, nicely done job. Uh, at least uh, that the watch is back now. Now what I need uh, for this watch is I need to get put on a uh, battery for this watch and uh, then the work will be done for this. But uh, when, when, I talk of, when I talk about Swatch uh, brand or Swatch watch group, it's not just about this, uh, you know, watch or uh, this brand. Swatch is one of the biggest uh, watch brands in the world. And I think not one of the, I think it is the biggest watch brand in the world. As uh, there are many other uh, brands that are associated with it. Uh, name, uh, if I want to uh, name them, uh, it will be Rado, Longines, Hamilton, Certina, Tissot, you know the swatch watch itself you know then there are flick flag and uh, brigway so many uh, i think there are 19 brands uh, like ck calvin klein uh, all these 19 brands are associated with 
this company and uh, it's interesting because uh, i i uh, personally was not aware about this and uh, i had a uh, you know market uh, proposal study related to my mba where i had a case study uh, for the swatch uh, group or uh, the swatch company and uh, I was you know, astonished seeing that so all these brands, which I thought, you know, were independent brands, were uh, belonging to this Swatch Group. So that is one of their strategy, wherein they, uh, you know, uh, have all these uh, brands under them. They work as independent companies, so that you know they do not, uh, uh, you know, they make use of it. Because if uh, if I come to know that everything is from the same brand usually i might go for you know i might want to try a different brand so that's their strategy wherein they oh i missed their biggest brand which is omega <laughs> omega is their uh, luxury uh, brand which is really famous and uh, i have with me like i said uh, one of their watches which is the longines la grande and yeah this watch i will be reviewing it uh, soon uh, i think i will do a more detailed review on that watch and so let me know your comments and what you think about uh, the swatch group and uh, what uh, the what should they do and you know um, and and things like that uh, but one uh, another thing that i would like to talk about is you know their if you look at their brand they they are a Swiss uh, watch company, yeah. So they do not, uh, they cannot compete with the, the cheaper Japanese or uh, you know uh, Casios or maybe Chinese watches. But they have a watch for all ranges, you know. Like they have segmentations like prestige and luxury range, high range, middle range, entry range, and even private label. Mm, so. Yeah, when I when you are talking about the prestige and luxury range, it's uh, Bl Blanc Pain, uh, Brigway, Harry Winston, uh, Glashut, Original, Omega, Jacquard, Ross, and Leno Hadoth. And high range watches are Rado and Longines, and middle range are uh, Hamilton, Certina, Hamilton and Certina. I'm not sure. Hamilton uh, may be more towards the high range, but yeah. Uh, can be considered as middle range wherein Hamilton, Certina, Mido, Tissot, Balmain and CK and in entry range they have Swatch the Swatch and the Flick Flack which is meant for kids so yeah and they even have something called Swiss Timing which is meant for sports watches so yeah that's all guys uh, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know your comments uh, regarding this video. Thank you.